Hey guys, Christian from Life. Welcome back to another video. Today, in today's video, I've been reflecting on the five day-to-day -day worst things and day-to-day -day best things about being an amputee. And I thought I would like to share it with you guys just before we go. Now I'll be making a, a four-part video series on gait, balance and stumbling. Um, do you guys remember I made a video called How to Develop, I think it was called the Kick-Ass Gait as an amputee? Well, I got a message from um, Question Everything. So I don't know if it's he or she, or but QE. Um, thank you for that. And it was mentioned in there that he or she really enjoyed that video and got me to thinking that for a while now I've been wanting to make a video on how to develop your balance better as an amputee. And I thought, why not do it in a four-part video series? So the kick ass series, the first one will be how to develop kick ass balance. The second will be how to put that to use to further develop a kick ass gait. So kick ass gait part two, duh. And um, the third one will be on how to um, prevent stumbling, falling. And the fourth one will be on how to um, recover from a stumble. If you do stumble, how to try and recover yourself. Or if you then fall, how to minimize or mitigate physical damage, getting hurt in other words. So I really look forward to making those and I'm going to start with that um, during the course of the next week. All right guys, in today's video what I want to talk about is um, when you think about losing a limb, uh, becoming an amputee, all the big things are of course there, uh, the losing of the limb and, and everything that comes with that. So the big losses are very obvious and, and easy to point out, but there are those small little in-between things that um, often become very annoying or that catch up, catches up with a person or interferes with our lives. And those are the ones that I want to talk about today. But it's not only those annoying little things, it's also some of the good stuff. I was wondering if I should split this up into two videos, but I thought, what the hell, let's just throw them in together because in a way they kind of tie in with one another. So thanks for joining me today. Let's get going. So you'll see I'm wearing a bandage and uh, this takes me right into number one, I think, not so nice of being an amputee for me. It doesn't happen to everyone, but it's infection. I'm wearing this bandage because I have an infection and the reason I have an infection is because I wash my hands a lot now with the coronavirus thing going on um, being in lockdown week moving into week three so i'm very aware and and um, i'm very uh, uh, infection sensitive so i'm going to take extra care i don't want to be on antibiotics and um, so i've been washing my hands a lot too much and the skin dries out i mean the skin dries out um, and you develop a blister or something yeah, not so nice but uh, you become, you can, uh, germs, you can, you can uh, germs can enter your bloodstream and you can develop an infection. So infection almost killed me. So I have this hyper awareness around infection. I have this hyper intent to try and prevent infection. So it's one of those lingering things that's always around and mostly it's not a problem. Um, by practicing good hygiene, I can take care of it and I have made a video about that. But um, so yeah, it's that lingering ongoing infection that every now and then steps into my life and it's not so nice. That's the first, right? So what's the second thing is for me, and I'm kind of winging it here because I want to bring it from the heart and from everyday experience. But for me, the second thing is, um, has got to be life slows down as an amputee is you just can't get things done as quickly as you, as I used to. So for instance, if I'm in the house, I've got steps down to the bottom, I get to my car and I've forgotten something, you know, Back in the day, I could just sprint up, grab whatever it is I forgot, my keys or my bag or, and get back into the car. You could do things quickly and um, that goes away. That, you just can't do that anymore. So um, it's life slows down. And with that, of course, comes um, the third one, which is safety. It's feeling more vulnerable to situations. Is I've got to be very careful when I cross a road. So I've got to look both ways and make sure that if I see a car coming, and I went across the road, then I, at the speed at which I can move, will make it across. So I can't start sprinting halfway across. I've really got to be careful, obviously try and cross at a pedestrian crossing or at a traffic light, but I really got to be careful about being sure that I can make it across the road in time. So it's safety, you do feel more vulnerable. I, I, I mean, 
have worried at times that I wouldn't be able to, if something happened to happen to my family, if we were threatened, I wouldn't be able to protect them as well as I could when I had two legs. But um, it's something you learn to live with and uh, learn to practice, learn to practice safety. Right, the third one has got to be the leg on leg off thing. It's just a pain in the butt. If I go to bed at night, I've got the leg off, I'm in bed and I've forgotten to fill my water bottle, I've got to jump up again and hopping is dangerous. I do do it and I hate to admit to it because it is dangerous for many reasons. You can hurt the ligaments in your good leg. Um, um, you can slip, of course, in the bathroom floor, so it's just not a good idea. You could trip over something. So I got one good leg, I need to protect that, so hopping is not a good idea. But So it's, it's the leg on off thing, on the beach, to get up and walk five meters, or you got to put it on and take it off and get down to the water, put it on again, and it's a real pain in the backside. So you can keep crutches handy, that is probably, a, well it is a much better idea than hopping, but leg on leg off is a real pain in the butt. And then the last one is learning to ask for help. I, uh, I, was, I was, I still am a very independent person. I had to learn that it's okay to ask somebody to help me to carry something or do something. And whether it's on a physical or an emotional level, it was an important step for me to take, um, is to be able to ask people to help me. All right, those are the not so good things. So then how could there possibly five, be five good things about being an amputee? But hang in there and I'm gonna tell you why. Um, the first is, I meet a lot of people because I'm an amputee. When I wear shorts and I go somewhere, people stop you. When I'm at the airport, people will approach me and ask me questions or, you know, when you're in a public space, not everyone, but quite a few people. I have never been annoyed when people do that. Kids, because they're spontaneous, will walk up to you and ask you, what happened? You know, and usually when the kids go, what happened? I go, cigarettes. But, um, so you make a lot of new friends with, um, being an amputee, and not only other amputees, but people, because people are curious, and I, I really like to answer their, answer their questions. This happened because of uh, losing my leg, and I've made thousands of friends through YouTube, through communicating with you guys. Um, yeah, I think that's my number one, is meeting people. That will take me to the number two, which is I really got to know myself. Through crisis, I got to know myself. When I lost my leg, I had a big confrontation with uh, my mortality, with what my life had been up to like, had been like up to at that point, and I was challenged to change aspects of it, which I didn't like, and thought that there, were, there was a part of my life I didn't want to take into this new um, timeline of being an amputee, and uh, so I was forced to change things, and through that process I got to know myself a lot better, um, like myself a little more, um, yeah, became curious about who I could be and how I could interact with this world and all the people that I was, that I was meeting. Three, a big one for me is hobbies, is having a project. And I spoke about that in my previous video, but since I've lost my leg, and I suppose I could have done that without losing my leg, but the fact is having lost my leg brought new projects into my life. And I do think it's an important part of getting through the whole process of being an amputee is to introduce exciting things. Uh, I can't be passive about this. I think that if we uh, go from a, a place of trauma, losing the leg, to a place of learning how to cope with that, but just remaining stuck in the, in the coping space, I don't want to cope for the rest of my life. I'd like to thrive or get on with life. So I had to take on new projects to get into that step. So I encourage you, if you're uh, pre-amputation um, or if you've just had your leg amputated, or even if you've been on that road a while, is Take on projects, it's um, exciting, it gives me a sense of purpose to move on and move, move forward. It's like curiosity about what is possible as an amputee. Okay, a big one for me is gear, all the prosthetics. I'm a bit of a gearhead, I love cameras, I um, love camping gear, um, and I love my prosthetic gear. So becoming an amputee opened up a whole new world in prosthetics and taking a big interest in that and um, all the different legs that I've tried, which has um, taken me to where I am now with my Oso Rio, um, which has changed my life. And it's also interesting how I've gone through the different stages and different types of legs, how the parallel between uh, quality of life and having the right gear and socket and prosthetist is, uh, it's remarkable. It's undeniable that having the right prosthetist, having the right gear 
improves quality of life and that's a responsibility that rests on the amputee is to go and pursue those and find the right person and the right equipment to fit your lifestyle, to fit our lifestyle. Okay, and then one of those small little perks of being an amputee has got to be you get good parking and you get to skip queues. Now, uh, to be honest, if I get to a shopping mall and um, there's a lot of parking, I'll probably park in the normal parking area um, because in my mind somebody will most likely arrive in a wheelchair and they will need a, a disabled parking bay. But if it's jam-packed and I can't find parking unless I'm going to walk a mile, I will take the disabled bay. So I feel it's a bit of a disabled perk is to be able to stop in a, in a disabled bay and then like when I'm at airports or often when you're uh, having to queue at a bank or somebody will come to you and say you can come to the front because you're wearing a prosthetic leg. And it's not to take advantage of that, but surely, surely having sacrificed a limb, we can enjoy a little perk of being, uh, of being disabled and that's just one of them. And then finally, I must say one of the big positives of being an amputee, and it'll take me back to the negatives, is the challenge to deal with the negatives it has taught me a lot about myself and has taught me a lot about life. Um, and I do think it's when we fall and we're challenged and we experience crisis that we are able to grow the most. All right, guys, that is today's video. Come back for the Kick-Ass series. Come and, come and hear what I have to say about that. If you want to learn about how to maintain balance better and how to learn to prevent falling and if you have to fall out to mitigate damage or injury, uh, I've got a few things to share with you guys. So in order to be notified, hit the subscribe button and there's that little bell. Click on the bell and uh, YouTube will send you a message to say that the video has been uploaded. Well, all right, thank you for joining me today and um, be safe, wear your masks, stay away from danger, keep people at a distance and um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Ciao.